Hello everyone, today we'll be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Let's get right into it. September 7th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number one. The court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. So let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name's Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of the <laughs> Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of <laughs> loss of <laughs> due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. Even in a girl's hand? Okay. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. Now, detective. Y yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Maya's face arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the Hmm, the very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Oof. Jack. Hey, you might just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Did it? Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay, I pressed, but not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. There are two people there already. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right, I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That's how I got there before the got away. Indeed. So, tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Yes, sir. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why is that? What's your reason? Why? We had a witness account describing her. Hold on just a second. Y yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about the suspicious woman in Ping's claim was hard evidence? W what? 
Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Ugh. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I haven't told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Hard evidence. After securing the su I've secured... After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found the memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body, but I picked that up and you found it. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in <laughs> Lab test results showed that <laughs> was the victim's. Also, there was <laughs> found on the victim's finger. For she <laughs> the victim wrote the <laughs> name. But how could she have died if she... What? How could she have done that? How would you like that? That's my hard evidence. But that doesn't make any sense because then she died instantly? Hmm. Before we begin cross examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor, why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh, I know. I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross examination. The time of was 9 and 5 at 9 p.m. caused single blunt force trauma death was instantaneous. Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey. That's really what you're saying. But what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course you wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediately due to a blow from a blunt object. She immediately. What? No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain the autopsy report? L when? The day of the the day after the I forget. When did I get this? 9-5 and what's today? I don't know. Um, uh, uh, day after? It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being? That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. This was almost immediate due to the blow from the blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. N no way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Man, it's worth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham. The detective's a sham. I'm a sham. The detective's a sham. Detective Gumshoe, you're a sham. How could you give me a faulty report? Huh? I, I thought... Detective Gumshoe? Uh... I'm disappointed in you handing him the wrong report like that. Eh, I, I'm sorry, sir. You're at fault, detective. This isn't going to look good on your evaluation next month. What? What? Ugh. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Man, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw them with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent?
Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton weeping. What? Aw, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the occurred? Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. law offices? Mm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witnesses account. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up with her and, and she, she, she hit her. Then the woman with long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Hmm. <laughs> well, your honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any... Wait, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony which just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Maria Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Is it perfectly good, though? But, hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have the feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. Just to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Witnesses account. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. Why would you do that? Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why is what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one? Go for it, why not? Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely, you must have had a reason to look out your window at a time of night. I- Oh! Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. B badgering You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, yeah, stop him! The poor girl. Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl. What about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The woman with long hair. That was Mia Fey. Um, hmm. A slender, sort of, well, some people might say pretty, but if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. It's right. Uh, no, it's not. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that you saw nothing. You're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Er Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Naya Bay, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. 
the testimony is bogus. But, but still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, your honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Roar. What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I... Just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. <laughs> your testimony again, if you would. Man, I always had her. Witnesses' accounts. I did see everything I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Um, the kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Tee hee. A little too accurate. How do you know it's a clock? I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. <laughs> weapon looks like a statue, but it's actually a clock. Miss May, what you said just now is quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Naughty, Mr. Lawyer. You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Uh, another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Okay, I'll note. Why you bring that up right now? <laughs> order, order! Miss May, can you explain how you knew this was the clock? Oh! The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. No, it's not. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. No, I will not. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught this with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If he stops me there, the trial will be over. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's because I heard it. Yes. I heard that you'd say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fane Co. N no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Fane Co, where the m took place, is very close to the hotel. She could have easily have heard the clock. Could she have? Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, how would you hear a clock from across the way like that? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. Literally, she could have heard it because it doesn't have anything. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty, it's broken, batteries are dead. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly just take a look right now? Oh, see anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big bat liar. Bat! Well, Miss May? Tisk tisk. Huh? Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow. He knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that is true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, 
Any proof when the clockwork was removed? Yeah? Oh, impossible, of course. I have proof. W what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is the phone, obviously. <laughs> Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh, oh you have a girly phone. But wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Even if it was, who cares? Is that the point here? Listen, this is a defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Oh, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fellow. I'm not. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Huh? <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? But, well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> so the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. No, no, it doesn't. Does the defense have any objections, Just right? Yeah, because it was made. The witness claimed she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts the piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Uh, impossible! Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> Oh, excuse, it's not on sale today. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should go for it. But whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh, 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 silly me. Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> so scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. This April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you held it, you had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She's hurt? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the weapon was a clock. Well, it's from her wiretap. Have a look at this. Uh, oh, uh, that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were taping the victim, Miss Mia Fay's phone, were you not? Oh, oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. How is it irrelevant? 
I'm not entirely sure that it is objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was taping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is the phone, obviously. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again, what's at this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I, I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Is it? Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. What? La Witness, answer the question. Did you tape her phone? Miss May, quiet, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer. That statement doesn't even make any sense. Obviously, I'd have the right if I am the lawyer. It, it's so fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, <laughs> That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. You did it, didn't you? Why the wiretap? Why did you tape her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a trial? Isn't tippy tapping your irrelevant? <laughs> She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were taping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. No, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Any proof you had nothing to do with the even though you taped your phone? Ha! Huh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Man, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course, I can, and I will. You can't be serious, no way! Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so the <laughs> happened around 9 at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. I ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. <laughs> Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the So, where does this leave us? It is my great displeasure to implore you that the witness appears to have been taping the victim's cell phone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. You sure about that? Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant my fake m No! They're going to let her just walk away! There's no way I can win this unless I time is made to t somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on. Think something. Witness? The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I have no idea how low I will go, girl. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? Got something to hide? But why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretaping had nothing to do with the Okay, so what? That's your opinion. You don't have any proof that it doesn't. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? 
I'm sorry, are you in charge of this courtroom? No, you're not. So if Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the and thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? You know, I'm going to accept that condition because, you know, I'm going to prove you wrong, sonny. <laughs> All right, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. <laughs> Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellpoint to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Why would he be allowed to have that in a courtroom? Very good, sir. Miss May's room service. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Little Great Water Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, I'm ready, I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the now, Maya will be finished. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. What exactly is it you do at the hotel? Why, anything required of me, sir. Anything you say. I check in guests, I check out guests, I clean rooms, I make beds, I even deliver room service, sir. I take Miss May in personally. Are you always so, so prim? Mr. Wright, you will refrain from asking your frivolous questions. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from our guest Miss May. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all of her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... <laughs> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? She asked for a nice coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. Nine on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine, the time of her. I brought it to her at precisely a request in time, of course. Precisely nine, then? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir, 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, tea, I'd like, like, iced coffee, exactly nine. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with a, um, an embracer, sir. An embracer? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. It's not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe, perhaps, she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think I miss me was up to something and wanted the bell boy to remember her. It's so good. There's nothing there. Is is that it? This disc. Finally, you understand. This bell boy had absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, we'll end this rather tedious cross examination here.
Mm, it is a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest. But well, wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's it. Okay, this is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Check-in, room service, bed making. Uh, room service? Tell me again about her room service. Uh, again, sir? As at exactly nine, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The request had requested iced coffee. Eighteen dollars was the charge, as I recall. I see. Huh? Eighteen dollars? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know, and we don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, oh, er, uh, rather, quite. Bell boy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you were, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Uh, yes, quite, indeed. It was the er, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if it wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oh, you fool. I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into the twin room with a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Then when you brought the room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was Miss April May, the man with it, Miss April May, the bellboy. Obviously, the man with Miss April May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Oh. Your Honor, as he's previously revealed, Miss April May was taping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the my, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Ooh. Upstart amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of my FA. Court is adjourned. September 7, 2.24 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright, you are amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, the other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead on today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis, don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. 
I thought it might come to in handy during the trial tomorrow, but now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. Many testimony added to the court record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center. It's up to me to set her free.